we're going to talk about how to do implicit differentiation. And I really want to give you an intro to this. So how would you take the derivative of this function? x equals y squared. This is basically a parabola that has been dumped on its side. Well, if you think about it, all of our derivative rules are all in terms of just having y equals or f of x equals, right? So now this kind of throws a curveball at us if we have y squared instead of y. And what we could do is we could technically solve for y. So how would I solve for y? I would take the square root of each side, but in using the square root property, you may or may not remember that you have to take plus or minus here as part of the square root property. So what this would equal is I would get y equals the square root of x or y equals the negative square root of x. And then from here, I could take my derivative. I would just have to take it twice, right? So this, this version of the derivative would be 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And then this one would be negative 1 over 2 times the square root of x. Okay, so that, that's kind of not great, and it's, it's also a lot of work. Um, and there's kind of an issue also of what happens if you have a function that you can't easily solve for y, i.e., what if you have a function like this? So you could totally have an equation like this, right? It's fine to have an equation in terms of x's and y's, but how would you take the derivative? Well, there's an alternative way that we can actually investigate this. So I'm going to be a little creative in how I take the derivative. So I'm thrown off because this y is, is y squared, right? So what I want to do first, just to make me more comfortable, is restate y. So a lot of times we interchange y with what? We interchange it with f of x. So where I want to start actually is I want to make this substitution. And I think this will just make me a little more comfortable with taking the derivative. Okay, so now I've, I've made that, that substitution. And now, check out what I've got here. I've got a function that is just in terms of x, and I can take the derivative. So if I take the derivative of the left side, the derivative of x is just 1. And then what rule do I have to use here to actually take this derivative? I would have to use the chain rule, right? So what I have to do is bring the 2 down. And then I would subtract, I would technically subtract 1 from the, the exponent here, right? Except I, I don't need to write anything here, so we just know kind of implicitly there's, there's a 1 here. But the chain rule says, so you take the derivative of the outermost function, and then you multiply that by the derivative of the inside function. Now, I might not know what f of x is, but I can represent the derivative, right? So the derivative of this would be f prime of x. Now. One other way that we tend to write f prime of x, an alternative notation for this is dy dx. That is the same thing as f prime of x. So I'm actually going to replace that here. So I have 1 equals 2 times f of x times dy dx. And apologies if you can hear my, my dog barking in the background. She's dead set on protecting me today. <laughs> OK, so um, the other thing is, so the f of x, so let's also change that back, right? So we, we kind of just made this like substitution up. So let's take this thing right here, and let's just plug it back into here. So now I finally have 1 equals 2y dy dx. Now, what we were trying to do was we were trying to find the derivative. So Look at what has happened now. I, I kind of have this derivative defined, except it's, it's not in the way that we're used to seeing it. So usually we're used to seeing dy dx isolated. So now the last thing that I want to do here is I actually just want to get dy dx by itself. So to do that, I will divide each side by 2y. And now I have this nice clear derivative. dy dx equals 1 over 2y. And so from here, I say, oh, hey, great, we found the same derivative from before. And you might say to me, hey, stop it. <laughs> that is not the same thing, right? This is not what we were just talking about. So let's do a quick recap. This is the function that I started with, x equals y squared. And if I solve for y, I get y equals plus or minus the square root of x. Now, using this form of the function, 
the first way I did this was I just took the derivative right for, or twice for each different way that we could write this function. So this was the derivative for the positive one, this was the derivative for the negative one. Then in this second method, I found dy dx, and remember dy dx and y prime, those mean the same thing, right? But I found dy dx equals one over two y. How are these two things the same? They're like totally different letters. Well, they actually totally are the same. Remember, y actually is represented by the plus or minus case. So if I actually plugged this into here, this is what I would get. I would get this two times plus or minus the square root of x. And this is precisely what these are here, right? So these three things actually are equivalent to one another. So the method works. And this, this process here, what we did here, this is what's known as implicit differentiation. And the nice thing about this is that in general, when we differentiate implicitly, we don't have to solve for y because like I said, sometimes it can be kind of difficult to do. So it's nice to have kind of this, this backup way. Now, I realize that looking at all this, you might be thinking, well, how do I actually do this now? So let's look at a few examples. So we're gonna take the derivative and I'll, I'll start this one, one with you. So implicit differentiation is actually pretty straightforward, I think, when, when you're working through it. So what I'm gonna start is I'm just gonna go ahead and take all the derivatives from the left to the right. But when I take the derivative with respect to y or when I take the derivative of a y, that's where they're, we're gonna have a little bit of a change. So the derivative of two x, I'm oh, sorry, the derivative of two x is just two. Now, what it would be the derivative of three y? So forget about the x for a second. Just if I told you to take the derivative of three y, you would tell me that the derivative is three. So anytime there's a y involved with your differentiation, you are going to add on a dy dx. That means that you differentiated y with respect to x, and this is also kind of a, a placeholder for saying like we had we had a y here, right? That that's like another way you could think about this. So what about if I take the derivative of this? This would be minus 2y dy dx, and then all of this equals zero. So the derivative of five is just gonna be zero. So this is step one. And now step two is you just wanna isolate and get by itself the dy dx. So you've just gotta do whatever it takes to make that happen now. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subtract the two. So I get three dy dx minus two y dy dx equals negative two. And now looking at this side, this is gonna be a pretty common trick. Both of these terms have dy dx in common, so you can factor out dy dx. So let me clear some space. And factoring out my dy dx, I get three minus two y. This will now equal negative two. And now I can just divide out the thing that I need to do so that I get dy dx by itself. So I get negative two over three minus two y. And boom, there is your derivative of this function here. So that's how implicit differentiation works. So if you feel like you've got it, I would recommend pausing the video here and giving these two examples a try and then hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So moving on to B here. So this one's using the product rule and this can be a little bit tricky, I know it can play with your mind a little bit. So it's all about when you're actually taking a derivative of y that you have to use a dy dx. And by the way, you can use uh, dy dx or you can use y prime. I prefer to use dy dx because my, sometimes my y primes, I, I, can, I can lose them or that used to be the case for me when I had uh, worse handwriting. But uh, it, you know, if you, if you prefer to use y prime in your problem, that's fine. Okay, so taking the derivative of this, so I have to use the product rule here. And with the product rule, here's my first function, here's my second function. So taking the derivative of x cubed, that's three x squared, and then I leave y to the fifth alone. So notice I did not take any derivative of y, so I'm not going to do anything to this. But now as I work on the derivative of the next part, I leave the x cubed alone, and then the derivative of y to the fifth is five y to the fourth. And because I just took a derivative with, uh, because I just took the derivative of y, I'm gonna write dy dx here. And then all of that's gonna equal zero. So there you go. 
So now all you've got to do is, is finish solving for dy dx. So I get, um, let's see, 5x cubed y to the fourth dy dx. And I'm just going to take this term and I'm just going to bring it over to the other side. So this will equal negative 3x squared y to the fifth. And then I just divide both sides by this 5x cubed y to the fourth. So I get dy dx equals negative 3x squared y to the fifth over 5x cubed y to the fourth, which of course I could simplify if I'm so inclined. So this will be y over x. And that'll be really common in problems like this where you can simplify. So there's your derivative. So now for this last one. So this is one where I have to um, take the chain rule. So same idea here. Um, so, so don't panic until you're actually truly taking a derivative of, of y directly. So as I look at this, so I know that this is really x plus 3y to the 1 half. So I need to use the chain rule here. Here's my outermost function. Here's my innermost function. So if I color code this whole thing, I'm going to bring the 1 half down, and I leave the inside intact, right? And then I subtract 1. And now I'm going to multiply this by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x is just 1. And then the derivative of 3y is 3 dy dx. So that's kind of what I mean about waiting until you take the derivative with respect to y. And now from here, you've just got to sort out kind of the, the algebra. So one thing I notice a lot is that people aren't sure where to go from here. So you have to distribute this. This is a strange thing to distribute, but you have to, the only way you're going to get to the dy dx is if you distribute. So you're going to have kind of this gnarly looking problem here. So I'm going to have 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 3y. So that's this term times 1, and then plus 3 times the uh, 3 over 2 times the square root of x plus 3y dy dx, and then all of that is now going to equal 0. So now I can go ahead and solve for dy dx. So let me make some space. And so I've got 3 over 2 times the square root of x plus 3y dy dx equals negative 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 3y. And so now basically I have to just multiply by the reciprocal, right? So I need to multiply this side by 2 square root of x plus 3y over 3. And so now kind of an interesting thing happens. And I'll just note here, so I multiplied this side by um, 2 square root of x plus 3y over 3, just so we don't forget that. So an interesting thing is going to happen here. Um, these drop out. And so I'm actually just left with dy dx equals negative 1 third. So kind of crazy, huh? And so that, that covers it. I have more video examples if you're looking to see, to see more of this, but that's kind of the general idea. So I will just stop it here. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully I'll see you next time.